So today we are going to start on another topic uh, on project management. Now, this topic is all about what are some of the importances of projects. Also, the different steps or stages in which a project undergoes before it is finalized. So we're going to look at the project's life cycle. Also, the importance of having project management as a concept in leadership and management. So the first thing first, we'll start by defining what a project is. And a project is defined as a collection of activities aimed at achieving a specific objective. So a project, we start by defining what a project is. And a project is defined as a combination of interrelated activities the combination of interrelated activities to achieve a specific objective to achieve a, a specific objective now keep in mind this definition because it bears on the characteristics of projects one is that projects are purposeful so they are geared towards a specific objective. And then, so a project is a combination of interrelated activities to achieve a specific objective within a specific budget, within a scheduled budget, scheduled budget. Also within a schedule, within a budget also, and according to the agreed standards the agreed standards agreed standards so when you undertake such a project that is what you're saying those interrelated activities so then we define what project management is now project management on the other hand this is application of knowledge and skills to ensure that this project achieves the specific objective that it was meant to do so that is project management so this is the application is the application of knowledge and skills of knowledge skills tools and techniques tools and techniques to a broad range to a broad range of activities in order to meet the objectives of this project of activities in order to meet the requirements the requirements of a particular project, of a particular project. So this concept of project management is very key because it creates a managerial position that we define as the project manager. Now that individual is tasked with ensuring that all these activities are, are done according to the timelines and the budgets and that specific objective uh, has been attained. So we will look at the attributes of such a project manager in a bit so that is what you're saying that this project management creates a position that you're saying for a project manager project manager so this is one of the components of a project management system which you're going to look at in a, in a bit So uh, this is the individual, this is the individual. Is the individual tasked with planning, controlling and implementation of this project and implementation of 
these projects of these projects this project so he undertakes all the necessary activities in defining what the project is and then we look at what then are some of the functions that this project manager should have so the functions that define this project managerial position is that one he should plan thoroughly all aspects of the project one is to plan so this is functions of the project manager project manager so this is that position that is created for ensuring that this project achieves these specific objectives that you're saying so to plan thoroughly to plan thoroughly all aspects of the project all aspects of the project of the project involving the necessary stakeholders involving all functional areas all functional areas all functional areas required or required for the implementation of the project so that is what you're saying one of the functions of the project manager is to plan thoroughly and he has to have inputs of these different uh, functional areas that will be utilized also another one is to control the organization of manpower needed to control the organization organization of the manpower needed by the manpower needed by the project needed by the project remember taking you back to the function of staffing we said one of the elements of staffing is manpower planning whereby we said you define the requirements of the staff that you require in terms of what you're going to do as a managerial position so this project manager comes up with the requirements of this project in terms of the staff that he will utilize so also another function is to lead the people or uh, to lead the staff of the organization to lead the people and the organization the organization assigned to the project assigned to the project to the project assigned to the project and provide that kind of motivation assigned to the project and provide and and provide motivation or and motivate the staff motivate the staff so remember we said the concept of leadership is such that you influence the behavior of other individuals so in any case if he wants to them to do a certain task he has to be in that uh, leadership role and then also to monitor the performance of the project to monitor performance 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 also the costs costs and efficiency and efficiency of all elements and efficiency of of all elements efficiency of all elements to be utilized in the project elements of the project or the project so he ensures that it is within budget so the costs are not overstated and then also to complete the project within schedule to complete to complete the project on schedule on schedule and within costs and within costs and within and within costs 
and according to the standards that are required. So those are some of the functions of the project manager that you're saying. So this individual is tasked with planning and controlling and implementation of the project. Now, the next part that you're going to look at is what are some of the characteristics that define what a project is? So the characteristics of a project, characteristics of a project. Keep in mind the definition of the project, which I, we said it is uh, aimed at achieving a specific objective. So one of the characteristics is that projects are purposeful. So they are purposeful. They have a reason as to why they are done. Projects are purposeful or objective. Projects are purposeful. Are purposeful. So they have a specific objective. Have a specific objective to be attained. And then also, Another one is that these projects that you're saying, they have a defined life cycle or they are time bound. Remember we said it's the duty of the project manager to complete this on schedule. So the projects, projects also have a defined lifespan or a time bound, have a defined lifespan. So that means that they have a schedule for which they should be completed. So have a period of completion, period of completion. Of completion. So take for instance, uh, a project like what the previous government came with, for instance, Vision 2030, you see, it has a specific lifespan as to when it should be achieved. And also their purpose or they have a specific objectives that they want to attain. For instance, uh, they should have increased the electricity in the rural areas that they have connected the rural areas also on education among other objectives. Also, these projects that you're saying require resources, projects require resources, be it manpower or the finances. Projects require resources. And then there's that element of risk and uncertainty, risk and uncertainty that they have a, an element of risk and uncertainty that even if you undertake to complete this project, chances are it might not be as advantageous as we had hoped it to be projects and then also another uh, characteristic for projects is that each project is unique in its own way so uniqueness 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 that each product project is unique in its own way also uh, projects have a life cycle projects have a life cycle have a life cycle they have stages for which they go through which you're going to look at in a few and then these projects have projects also have interdependence of tasks projects have interdependence of tasks remember uh, under organizing function while we were doing organizing function we said one of the ways in which an organizational structure can be arranged is in terms of functional structure functional the other one was divisional and matrix structure so we look at projects organization which factor in these organizational structures one of the elements of functional structure that we discuss is that there's interdependence of tasks. One of the aspects that we discussed on the uh, disadvantages that if one of the departments fails, the rest of the system is collapsed. So projects also have that kind of interdependence of tasks. That's why 
the project manager has to involve all the functional areas required, functional areas required. And then uh, projects are said to be flexible, so flexibility in that they can change throughout this life cycle of lifespan, they may incorporate changes that are due to the circumstances that you're saying also. So uh, a project may see changes through its lifespan. That is what you're saying. A project may see changes through its lifespan, throughout its lifespan. And then also another feature of a project is that there's an element of subcontracting. Now, what subcontracting is, is those tasks that the management cannot do for themselves, they contract another individual also to help in achieving these specific objectives that we are attaining. So, so this is uh, having another aspect of the project being taken over by an individual also. So for instance, in a field like uh, what you are, we are building, uh, what the government is building, the express highway, they have to incorporate experts or consultants to help in that kind of a project to be completed. So subcontracting is that aspect of engaging an outsider. And then also, Also projects, you can say projects, projects are planned organizational change, are planned organizational change. This is one way of instituting change. You come up with a project that if implemented, it will change the organization, planned organizational change. So those are some of the uh, aspects of characteristics of a project. So then we look at what are some of the elements of this project management. One we have said is the project manager. The other one is the project team or the staff that you will engage in terms of the project completion. So uh, the elements of a project management elements. So this one you can add their elements of project management. So one is the project manager. We have already discussed that this individual has certain functions with regards to the project, which we have clearly outlined here. And then also the project team. Now the project team, this is the staff employed to undertake this project the project team. So this is, is bringing individuals together, is bringing individuals together. Is bringing individuals together to form a single cohesive team, to form a single cohesive team that work hand in hand to achieve the goals of that project cohesive team working towards a goal. And then also we have the project management system, project management system. So this is the entire bit of the project management in terms of keeping tabs on the performance also project management system. So this is composed of, you can say is composed of how work will be done. For instance, the organization is composed of organization organizational structure. So it's composed of the organizational structure. Also,
the information processing, information processing, how information that relates to this project will be understood, information processing, information processing. And the practices and procedures and practices and and the practices and procedures to be adopted to be adopted all of those now formulate the project management system project management system so then if you're saying this is a very key concept towards leadership and management then we have to factor in what are some of the advantages or importance of having project management. So one is that it increases productivity. So this you can have importance, importance of projects and project management and project management. So one, you can say, project management or application of this knowledge and skills increases productivity project management increases productivity increases productivity also number 2 you can say for the projects 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 help or aid help in realization of the company's company's vision company's vision or goals vision or goals goals also the concept of project management project management helps to reduce costs incurred in undertaking projects or uh, project management keeps the projects keeps projects on budget projects on budget also project project management decreases the level of risks involved in projects decreases the risks involved in projects because now you will make calculated moves after an analysis of the risks that you may encounter. And then also uh, project management also, you can say project management improves, improves the company's product qualities improves companies product qualities that you can come up with better product quality that the products that you come up with are of high quality also through these projects that you undertake and then also you can say projects projects uh, aid, aid companies, aid companies in strategic, in strategic implementation, in strategic implementation, implementation. So through diversification this comp this project may be to come up with a new product diversification and then also you can say project management project management streamlines decision making streamlines decision making what that means is they help in terms of identifying the viable projects through applications of these uh, skills that you're saying. So those are some of the importance of having project management or having that 
application of knowledge of skills application of knowledge and skills towards projects being undertaken in a company so when you when you want to start up a project you have to analyze where the position of the company is and have a base of where you will begin for instance if you want to uh, you undertake a project to increase sales to increase the sales or productivity of a certain department you first of all have to have an analysis of the current position current position of where the company is at in terms of sales now what this means is formulating what we we'll call next as baseline studies baseline studies that you understand the current position of the company so that you come up with a project that has a specific objective so the next part we look at the features of baseline studies features of features of projects and baseline studies projects and baseline studies and baseline studies or surveys baseline surveys or studies so remember the definition of a baseline survey is you understand the current status of the organization so that it will help you to know the starting point of this project that you're going to undertake also in terms of knowing the impact that the project has we're going to look at that also so you can uh, define what a baseline survey is so a baseline baseline study or survey a baseline study is a study that is done is a study that is done at the beginning of a project at the beginning of a project at the beginning of a project to establish the current status establish the current status the current status to establish the current status of the organization of the organization before a project is rolled out So these baseline surveys or baseline studies are very important because they form the basis of wh why we are undertaking these projects that we are saying. So we can have here importance of baseline studies, importance of baseline studies. What role do they play in terms of project management so one is it is a starting point of a project it is or it is a starting point of a project you know where you're starting it is a starting point for a project for a project because now this will help you understand that this is where we are at the current status current status of the organization and then also number two it helps in establishing establishing priority areas priority areas areas or in planning or in planning when you understand where the company is at with regards to the current position then you'll be able to know the areas to put more emphasis in when you're undertaking this project that you're saying. Also, uh, so this is establishing priority areas uh, in terms of helping in planning. And then these baseline tools, baseline tools, baseline tools 
are used for evaluation, are used for evaluation. You can actually evaluate where the company is at or where the project has managed to achieve, what the project has managed to achieve, used for evaluation. Because now you, you are looking at like for like, you know that this is what I, I, was, I was doing before this project. Now this is where the company is at. Baseline studies or baseline surveys. And then also, it helps, it helps the company or it helps the project manager, the organization project manager, stroke the organization to understand the impact of their project to know the impact of a project, to know the impact of a project, of a project, of a project that you have undertaken. Also, this baseline surveys, in case that you want, we said one of the features of a project is that it requires resources, and these resources may be finances or funds. In any case, if you want to source for funds, for this project, this baseline study will serve as a, as a basis of asking for funds. So one, also it is a donor requirement, donor requirement, donor requirement, so that they have a reason why they are financing this kind of project. Donor requirement, donor requirement, it's a donor requirement. So this now will help them understand even the monetary and evaluation of this project, that they will know that their funds have been utilized to improve the organization in one way or another. Donor requirements, it is a donor requirement. So then one of the features that we identified for uh, projects is that a project undergoes a life cycle. Now this life cycle, these are the stages that the project undergoes from the starting point to its completion. So that is what we want to discuss next, the project life cycle and its development. Project life cycle and its development. And development, project life cycle and development. project life cycle and its development. So the project undergoes different uh, stages or phases. So this project life cycle and its development. So you define what a project life cycle is, and you say these are the logical stages, project, project life cycle. These are the logical stages that is a collection of logical stages or phases is a collection of logical stages or phases that a project undergoes or phases in the life of the project, in the life of a project from the beginning to its end, from the beginning to its end. So the, those stages that it undergoes, that is what you're saying, from the beginning to its end. So the stages uh, that it undergoes include so you can have the stages of the product life cycle. So the first one is to define the purpose of why you're having this project. Defining the purpose of the project. So one is the uh, define the so stages of a life cycle. So one, define, define the project goal, the project goal. So this is whereby, or uh, this is also known as the initiation phase. 
or the first phase, initiation phase. So this is whereby uh, the scope of the project is defined. Define the project goal. So the scope of the project is defined. Is defined. And also the goals and the goals to be achieved, the scope and the goals and the goal to be achieved. And the approach taken to deliver on that and the approach taken, and the approach taken. to deliver the desired output, the desired output. So this is what you're saying that the first stage, you have to come up with the goal. Why are we, come, why are we undertaking this project? Define the project goal. And then the next one now is you plan for the project, plan, planning, plan the project, plan the project, or plan, plan the project. So this is a detailed identification of the tasks to be done. So is or involves involves identification identification of tasks to be done of tasks to be done of tasks to be done taking into account taking into account the resource requirements into account the resource requirements the resource requirements also the budgets the budgets the cost budget or the budget cost budget and also the project schedule project schedule project schedule or how long it will take so project schedule means how long this project is going to take project schedule and the policies and procedures and policies and procedures and procedures and policies and procedures to be developed to be, to be developed so that means that you come up with all the requirements that you will need for this project also the budget and the timeline or for how long this project should take till its completion and the policies and procedures to be developed towards this plan or the, this project and then the other one is on uh, executing the project plan now this is carrying out the plan itself executing execute the project plan so what you have outlined here these tasks that is what is done in that case so this is uh, executing or execution phase so you can say the project manager coordinates his team coordinates his team to ensure that the project is executed coordinates his team to ensure that the project is executed the project is executed according to the timelines according executed according to its scope time according to its scope scope is the area that it was deemed to uh, be implemented also the time and cost and cost at this stage all the activities are documented because now future plans or future projects 
we look back at this project and see what are some of the successes and failures of implementation of such a plan. So also you can say the prog progress must be documented for this one, progress must be documented. And also, so this progress also will help in evaluation in terms of the baseline that you're saying in comparison to the baseline. So must be documented and also you can add uh, and compared and compared to the baseline and compared to the baseline. Also, the next step now under execution of uh, under project life cycle is you close the project, close the project or closure, close the project, project, close the project. So this is any work that involves this project is completed. Any task that involves this project, you ensure that there is nothing pending towards the project. For instance, take the uh, the concept of building the Thika Highway. So one of the goals that probably was meant by it was to increase uh, increase the businesses or the kind of trading activities that people use in that highway. And then planning of the project, this now entails the tasks to be undertaken towards building that highway. And then execution of the project plan, this is what was, was happening at the time. So whereby the, the people that were contracted to build the highway were put into work. Now, closing of the project, this is whereby any work regarding that construction was to be finished. So closing of the project, that is what you're saying. So this, uh, this is ensuring that all of the work is completed. This is ensuring all of the work regarding the project, regarding the project is completed, is completed, is completed. So there's no pending work that is left, is completed as planned, is completed as planned. So this may also involve writing a formal project review report. So it may involve writing also a formal project review report, formal project review report, review report. So what that means is you have documented everything and you look back at what are some of the things you would have done differently when undertaking this project, project review report. Now, lastly, uh, you evaluate the project or evaluation, evaluate the project, evaluate the project. Now, taking for example, uh, the case that you're using for the construction of the Tika Highway, this is now after we finished building that road, a few years later, we try and see, did it achieve the goals that we had hoped for it? So evaluation of the project, this is an analysis of whether the project that we undertook has achieved the goals that it was intended to. So that is the last step, evaluation, evaluating the project. So this is evaluating whether the project met its goals. This is evaluating. whether the project met its goals, met it, its goals. So that is what you're saying that you evaluate if this project uh, had actually met its goals. Now, so that is the uh, project life cycle that we, we are discussing, the stages that a project undergoes. 
from the starting point to its completion to its completion now we look at the concept of uh, project management or how then do we apply the knowledge and skills that we were saying so and specifically we look at the process of project management so you can say uh, the project management project management phases so we have looked at the life cycle of the project now then how do we apply the skills that we have in terms of ensuring that this life cycle is a uh, is followed through till the end and the goal is achieved so the project management process 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 so the first one so the first one uh, is project conception and initiation project conception and initiation conception and initiation remember this is now how you apply the knowledge and skills initiation towards coming up with a project that is actually helpful to individuals initiation So for this kind of stage and a project management process, this is where you define if this project will benefit the organization or not. So this is determining, you can say, uh, this is carefully, so this is carefully, carefully examining, carefully examining an idea, carefully examining an idea to determine an idea to determine whether it is beneficial or whether or not it benefits the organization whether or not it benefits the organization organization so that is project conception and initiation you try and see if you will pick the best project or uh, if this project is actually viable and then also uh, you define the project and plan project definition and planning project definition and planning and planning so under project definition and planning So this is you outlining a scope of the kind of task that you are to undertake as a project manager. So this is outlining, outlining, outlining the work to be performed, outlining the work to be performed, to be performed. And that may entail coming up with a budget or a schedule. So, so uh, which may entail, you can say which may entail formulating a schedule or formulating a schedule. A schedule of how, a schedule of how work is to be done, formulating a schedule. And then also, now you launch the product, uh, project, project launch or execution, project launch or execution. You actually undertake to do all these tasks that you've listed here, project launch or execution. So in this kind of a, a process or stage, this is where, remember one of the, concepts and the planning of the project you identify the tasks to be done so under project launch or execution this is now pinpointing the individuals to carry out those tasks so uh, the resources and tasks are distributed to the project team resources and tasks and the tasks are distributed
are distributed to the project team to the project team to the project team so also in this kind of uh, step also the project team are given the relevant information concerning the project also so you can add that uh, dissemination of information dissemination of project related information of project related information related information is done at this is done at this stage and then also you carry out an evaluation of this perform of this project so project performance and control the next one project performance and control to see how the company is doing or uh, how the project is doing project performance and control so this is keeping track of this project status and progress so this is keeping track of the project status project status or progress or progress or progress what that does is it keeps you in check for instance the schedules that you came up with you know that either you are early or you are late with regards to the time that you are allocated to these specific tasks so to keep the project status uh, to keep track on the project status and progress so this is whereby uh, adjusting of schedules also may occur so adjusting of schedules of schedules may occur at this stage because ideally there are some instances where you may not be on track with the timelines that you had envision for this project and then also lastly you ensure that all the work regarding the project is done project close project close so this is ensuring ensuring all project related tasks or project related tasks or work work all project related task or work is completed is completed is completed so those those are some of the steps involved in application of the necessary knowledge and skills in uh, ensuring the project is a success now i want you to think of this uh, question so why do you think or reasons reasons why projects fail what are some of the reasons that you think uh, projects fail reasons why projects fail so while we go for a short break try and think of why what are some of the reasons why projects actually fail
So what are some of the reasons why projects fail? One is, uh -huh, one is poor planning, poor planning. Another one also, pardon? Poor, also lack of proper definition of project goals. They do not know what the project is intended for. So you can say, and clear definition of goals, definition of goals. Also, lack of adequate resources, lack of adequate resources. This is a point, this is always a point. Lack of adequate resources. Also, with regards to these resources, even if they are inadequate, there is also mismanagement of resources, mismanagement or misappropriation, mismanagement, or misappropriation of resources, of resources, of resources. Also, uh, lack of proper risk identification and mitigating plans. So also lack of risk management, risk management over risk management, risk management, lack of risk management mechanisms. So this is where also in the case of lack of effective leadership in these projects or lack of skills, lack of required skills in implementing the project required skills in implementing the projects, especially from the project manager in implementing the project. Among others, there are so many you can list them also in implementing the project. So these are some of the reasons for project failure uh, that you can have there. So then, if you want to source for information regarding projects to undertake, there are certain areas that you may source from. One is, this is with regards to where you may get information on projects. You, you can read uh, relevant literature. Also, the internet or the web also, and engaging people who have undertaken projects which have been successful, which have been successful so that is all in line with uh, sources of uh, project information now i want us to define uh, to look at certain concepts in this project management process a bit into more detail and first of all we we'll start with project initiation we'll see what are some of the activities that are uh, involved in that project initiation and uh, definition or conception so you can say uh, project initiation project initiation so we look at the concepts certain concepts that actually affect project management project initiation so under this you can say this involves now project initiation this involves the project project plan of approach project plan of approach of approach of approach that is the project methodology ie the, the, in essence that is the project methodology identifying the project methodology to be undertaken project methodology to be undertaken so that is in line with identifying what is to be done or whether the project is beneficial to be undertaken undertaken also
So you can say this involves formulation also of a project initiation document. This involves formulation of a project initiation document. Initiation document. So this is also known as PID document, which now states the activities. So which contains the following information, which contains one, contains one, the aim or the purpose of the project, the aim or purpose of the project, purpose of the project, alongside also the benefits that we hope to get from this project if we implement it. So the measurable improvement, the measurable improvement, the measurable improvement anticipated from the project, anticipated, anticipated from the project as a result of the project. And then also another content of this project initiation document is what is to be expected to be delivered or the deliverables. So you can say the deliverables or the outcomes, or outcomes expected, outcomes. Outcomes that the project must deliver. Outcomes the project must deliver. So th that is also another content that should be included there. So this now is with regards to the project management process that you're saying. Also, in any case, you identify the limitations or restrictions. So also the limitations of the constraints, the restrictions, stroke limitations, restriction, stroke limitations that you may encounter when implementing this project. So such as, such as time, also funds, funds or resources, funds or resources. Also, the key people that will be involved in this project, also key people, the key stakeholders involved in the project, involved in the project among others. So these are some of the content that you expect to deliberate on with regards to the project initiation, the project initiation. Now, the next one you're going to look at is on the project planning, project planning, whereby you come up with a schedule, project planning, project planning and scheduling, project planning and scheduling and scheduling and scheduling also, project planning and scheduling. So when we talk about project planning, this involves coming up with a plan of the uh, related objectives that you hope to achieve and identifying the deliverables and making a schedule for the same. So you can define what project planning means that it is project planning project planning, in other words, is stating how to complete a project. This is basically identifying steps on how to complete a project. So project planning, you can say, is stating how to complete, to complete a project within a certain time frame. complete a project within a specified or a certain time time frame <clears throat> time frame so uh, with designed stages and resources and designated resources so the activities that are involved in this you can say the activities activities involved in project planning activities involved are, are one you come up with 
setting of objectives that should be measurable, setting objectives that should be measurable, that should be measurable. measurable that should be measurable so this one will help you to evaluate or uh, monitor the performance of the of the project also identifying deliverables identifying deliverables so what is to be expected of the people tasked with this project and then also planning the schedule planning the schedule when you talk about schedule this is how they will be undertaken the the activities will be undertaken or the consecutive nature or sequence for which the activities will follow so planning the schedule and also making supporting plans making supporting plans making supporting plans so to explain this remember one of the concepts of projects that we say the characteristics of projects is that it involves interdependence of tasks what that means is that you will need to interact with the other departments of the organization so you'll have to come up also with supporting plans for instance the hr plans this is with regards to acquiring the necessary resources or also the risk management plan now this one you will have to engage the risk committee risk management plan among others so this is what you are saying the basis of the characteristics of projects form most of the concepts that we discuss later on in this topic of project management like that one case in point making supporting plans making supporting plans so this project scheduling that you're saying on the other hand this is preparing a list of how the activities will be undertaken or the sequence for which the activities will follow So project scheduling, you can just define that project scheduling. Project scheduling. So this is concerned, this is, is concerned with So this is concern with attaching a time scale and sequence to the activities to be undertaken. Attaching a time scale, a time scale and sequence. Touching time scale and sequence to be conducted, to be conducted within the project, within the project, within the project. Just like what we have in organizations that you come up with a timetable or a schedule of how deadlines will be met. So you say from 24th to 25th. This is the period for posting of invoices, 26th to 29th, this is reconciling. 30th uh, to 1st, that is now preparing the reports and then presentation to the board. Just the same way that is project scheduling, project scheduling. And then we look at project organization also. Another key concept of project management is project organization. So this is this falls part of how work is to be arranged project organization so you can say uh, the performance of a project for this one you can say the performance of a project 
performance of a project. The performance of a project is influenced by how resources are arranged or organized. In, is influenced by how well resources are organized are organized and now what this means this is the concept that i was bringing you back that we have to have certain organizational structures that we discussed even in the organizing function the organizing function so you can say most common structures of organizing most common structures for project organization organization include or uh, include one we said functional 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 structure functional structure and you say this is where work is organized according to the functional activities so you can say project projects are organized projects are coordinated or are organized coordinated according to the functional areas to the functional areas of the business So that is functional, sorry, functional structure, functional structure. And then also you can have matrix structure. So, so we discussed this at length in organizing function, matrix structure. But just to remind you, for matrix structure, we said this one, it defies the unity of command, where we said an individual is answerable to more than one line manager, one line manager, matrix structure also. So this is where uh, project coordination, project coordination is done with several managers, several managers to whom the project team answer to, to whom the project team are answerable to, answerable to. So you go back and read on uh, the advantages of these kinds of structure also are answerable to. And then we have another one uh, that we call the project-based organizational structure. Now this is now a form of the divisional structure that you're saying project-based organization structure. This is just like what we had under divisional structure. We said it can either be product, it can either be geographical area, now for this one project based organizational structure so this is where organizations are arranged according to projects just like we what we had for products product a product b product c now for organizations in this setting we have project a project b project c like that so this is where uh an organization an organization an organization supports multiple structures supports multiple structures multiple sorry multiple projects multiple projects multiple projects and its activities its activities are defined by these projects its activities are defined by these projects
by these projects. So you have project A, project B, project C, like that. And then another concept that you need to look at also with regards to project management is with one of the reasons why project fail is due to lack of adequate resources. Now, one of the, uh, the resources that we utilize are funds. So how then do we finance this kind of projects if we were to undertake them? So that leads us next to uh, the concept of budgeting and financing of project, budgeting and financing, and financing, and, and financing. So first of all, we define what a budget is. And I'm sure this one you've interacted with it even in other units, budgets. So this is a monitoring and a, so is a management tool for monitoring costs and controlling finances of a project. So this one you can say is a key management tool. There are other definitions to this, but this is just an overview of what it entails. It's a key management tool for monitoring and controlling, monitoring and controlling the finances and controlling the finances of a project or an organization of a project or an organization. Or an organization. So in other words, what you're saying is that these budgets, they estimate the kinds of costs that you're going to incur. So they, they pre provide an estimate. So you can add that point that for budgets, they estimate the income and expenditure. So it estimates income and expenditure to be incurred income and expenditure expenditure also for a set period of time for a set period of time for a project for a set period of time for a project for a project or organization or organization. So what are some of the uh, functions of a budget? So importance or importance of budgets. This one's I know you know, importance of budget. Importance of budgets. One is what you said, monitoring the incomes and expenditures, monitoring income and expenditures income and expenditures and expenditures income and expenditures for a period of time for a period of time so this is what we are saying for a period of time also another one is that they provide a basis for accountability providing a basis for accountability and transparency and transparency transparency also they ensure that we know if there's any adjustments to be made with regards to the programs and goals so uh, help in determining, help in determining if adjustments need to be made if adjustments need to be made with relate uh, with uh, if adjustments need to be made to the programs. Be made. 
in the program in the program and goals and goals also and goals so programs are just a subset of what is to be undertaken in the projects so also among others so there are so many important things of budgets that one you can also add the ones that we have covered in Andrasime. and then also under funding funding of the project funding of the project funding of the project so this one is whereby we look for resources in terms of the finances of the project so you can say this is determined by this is determined by the type this is determined by the nature of the project nature of the project nature of the project a the nature of the project i'm sure you have encountered the different classifications of projects that we have either divisible either all those capital projects also so the nature of the project determines if we require if we require more finances with regards to that project for instance capital projects uh, require high high kind of finances or uh, injection of finances so you can say uh, for capital projects or capital project or capital scheme of projects capital projects call for a large call for a large injection of finance injection of finance of finance also and then also on the nature of the organization nature of the organization nature of organization so nature of the organization so there are different ways through which you can raise finances and 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 uh, organizations so this one's also you encountered in a part so one is issue of shares you can issue of shares so this is you can say if an organization has share issues also you can finance capital in terms of debt long term long term loans long term loans long term loans and even in any case if you want to acquire or have uh, equipment there is the concept of leasing 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 also another concept still under this is cost estimation cost estimation we are saying that you have to monitor the cost incurred in projects and the kinds of costs that you may incur here what are some of the types of costs that you may incur here one is sunk costs and what are sunk costs what are sunk costs These are historical costs, costs that have already been incurred in prior periods. And then, so, cost estimation, you can say, this involves, this involves, one, determining what resources will be needed determining what resources will be needed to perform the tasks also the quantity of resources determining the quantity the amount of resources determining quantity the amount quantity of resources in terms of finances and also defining the cost of using each resource also defining the cost of using defining so needed 
the cost of using of using each resource and then also <coughs> calculating the tasks calculating the cost of each task calculating the cost of each task the cost of the tasks of the task or activity of the task or activity so the cost that may incurred there may be incurred there is with regards to can have indirect cost and what are indirect costs What are indirect costs? Costs that you cannot attribute to your product directly. For instance, rent, utilities, those kind of uh, insurance also. Indirect costs also sunk costs that you're saying, the costs incurred in prior periods. Also, you have to factor in the learning curve of the individuals. And the learning curve of the individuals is how first they uh, take up the tasks of completion of these projects. So for instance, the amount of time you take to do one aspect of a, of a project, it will take you less time the, the next time that you're doing the same kind of activity. Also, you have to factor in that with regards to project. And then we look at project completion and evaluation, project completion and evaluation. And evaluation. So this is whereby you have done the project. Now you are evaluating on what are some of the information that you can gather from implementing this project. So what that means is you take into account the objectives that you set. For instance, what we said, projects are purposeful or they have a specific object, object, objective. So you can define this and say, uh, post completion evaluation or after completion, post completion evaluation, post completion evaluation, provides valuable information, provides valuable information relating to, relating to how the projects, how the objectives were achieved, relating to, sorry, relating to how effectively the objectives were achieved, relating to how effectively the objectives were achieved. Also, were achieved. Also, how effective the project performance or uh, evaluation of how it was doing as the progress was continuing was also so you can have how effective the project evaluation effective how effective the project evaluation project evaluation methods project evaluation methods were how effective the project evaluation methods were in ensuring that the project that was picked was in line with the objectives were also. And then also how efficient and how, and how efficient the project implementation was, project implementation was. So this is looking back at how you undertook the project entirely.
So one of the ways in which you can uh, undertake this post completion evaluation is by doing so with this kind of approaches. So you can say for this one, uh, post completion evaluation or after completion of the project evaluation. So you can say an approach, an approach to conducting this, an approach to conducting this, conducting this post completion evaluation post completion evaluation may be through maybe through one defining the purpose of the evaluation define the purpose of the evaluation why are you carrying out an evaluation of the evaluation so this will guide you to know what you are looking for in the procedures that you undertook in implementation of the project purpose of the evaluation number two also to define the focus to define the focus of attention, the areas that you'll place more emphasis on, focus on attention, uh, attention. Also, on the methods of evaluation, methods of evaluation, methods of evaluation, methods of evaluation. So for instance, you may compare in terms of time that was taken to complete this project, also the resources utilized. So methods of evaluation. So for instance, compare, comparing in terms of time, in terms of time. And we are comparing this to the baseline study that we, we carried out. also different areas of where this project was taken or under, undertaken and then also you collect data collect data for which you analyze collect data and the data that you collect from the project this is all the activities that you undertook the all the hiccups that you had in implementing the project you analyze the data, analyze the data, analyze the data. So these are some of the concepts that you have to have in when carrying out post completion evaluation. So, so far we have looked at uh, that concept of project management. We have discussed the project life cycle also the project management process and uh, i want you to write down this question so have this question questions so question number one question number one discuss the importance discuss the importance of the concept discuss the importance of the concept the concept of product of product or project life cycle project life cycle project life cycle project life cycle and its implication and its implication and its implication discuss the importance and concept of the project life cycle and its implication for business planning and budgeting 
so business planning and budgeting and budgeting So this one has to make you remember the project life cycle and try and see what are some of the ways in which you can uh, bring out the concept of why it is important. Also, another question. Discuss, discuss, discuss five ways in which, discuss five ways in which a project manager project manager would ensure project manager would ensure the success of a project so this one is in other words asking you ways to overcome the reasons why projects fail reasons why projects fail Also, uh, you can have this other question there. Outline five characteristics. Outline five characteristics. Outline five characteristics. Outline five characteristics. Of project of projects outline five characteristics of projects Also, what are some of the benefits? What are some of the benefits of an organization that undertakes project management? What are some of the benefits? Of an organization that undertakes project management. So those are some of the uh, questions you can try out also on this topic of project management. So that marks the end of that topic, project management. So we are going to stop there for today.